One more example, negative 3x over 2 times radical 3x. Okay, can I simplify the fraction? Well, no, not yet. There's 3 in the numerator and 3 in the denominator. However, there's, this 3 is in a radical, that 3 is not, those cannot be canceled. Same idea is applying to those x's. Fraction cannot be simplified. How about the radical? Can I simplify this radical 3x? No. So it's time to work in our third idea that is there's a radical in the denominator and that's no good. What I'll do is just multiply by radical 3x. I don't need another 2 because remember my problem is that there is a radical in the denominator. That 2 is no kind of problem at all. It's actually nice to see it's out of the radical. So my problem is with the radical. That's the only part that I need to double up. So a 3, 1, 3, and 1 x. I just brought in my second 3 and second x. So I'll be able to simplify that radical. What I do to the denominator, have to do to the numerator. So a times radical 3 x in the numerator. Now let's do these multiplications and simplifying. Negative 3x with radical 3x in the numerator. Now we didn't try to put these 3x's together because this one's out of the radical, that one's in the radical. They cannot go together. Side by side is the best they can do. How about denominator? We have a 2. We have a 3x with another 3x. We just doubled it up so we can have a 3x outside of the radical. Now you might be spotting some things we can do to simplify. Just going to uh, go slowly here. My numerator. I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. Clean up that denominator. 2 times 3x is 6x. Now, before I say this problem is finished, can I simplify the fraction? And here's a great example where, at the beginning of this problem, we could not simplify the fraction, but now that we've rationalized the denominator, some parts became available that we could simplify. So, some outsiders, the x and x, now they are both outsiders, so we can cancel those. And there's a negative 3 over 6. That can be simplified. That's a fraction that equals negative one half. This radical 3x we could not simplify. There was no radical in the denominator for us to try to cancel with the 3x. And the radical itself we could not simplify any further. So that is pretty close to how our answer looks. To me that is an accurate, correct answer. Your book or your teacher might encourage you to just clean it up a little bit. That 1 is a coefficient, so that will often go away. And there's our negative, radical 3x over 2. Our next example for rationalizing the denominator has changed things a bit. So I want to continue with our last way, but really just to show you that our way that we've been using is not going to work on a problem like this. And the, here's how I know that it won't work. Looking in the denominator, we have two terms. That is what I need to spot about problems to, where I rationalize the denominator. So I know I need to rationalize the denominator when I see that there is a radical in the denominator. That is the problem. That is when we need to rationalize. But when I look at, in the denominator, I have two terms compared to our previous few examples where our denominator was just one term. So two terms is the clue that I need to use a different approach to rationalizing the denominator. Now I'll, I'll show you why we need a different approach. Before we would say, there's my problem radical 3, so I need to double it up. That's how I can get the 3 out of the radical. And if I do it to the denominator, I need to do it to the numerator. So numerator is 1 times radical 3 is radical 3. Denominator, now that it's two terms, I have to be cautious about how I do multiply. If you're trying to multiply two terms by one term, that has to be distributed. So then radical 3 has to be multiplied to each of those terms in the parentheses. That would leave us with 2 radical 3 
plus radical 3 times radical 3 is radical 9, which is just 3. So multiplying by radical 3, it did cancel with that radical 3, but what did it do? It, it created a different, a new radical in a different spot. So it didn't take care of the problem for us. It just moved the radical around. It was here, and now it's there. And if I multiplied by radical 3 again, it would move from there back to this side. So that's why when there are two terms, just multiplying by one radical 3 does not work. We did the multiply and our result still has a radical in the denominator. So with two terms, we need to use the conjugate. To rationalize the denominator, when the denominator is two terms, use the conjugate. To find the conjugate, we look at our two terms, the 2 plus radical 3, and all we want to do is change the sign in the middle. If it's an add, we will change it to a subtract. If it's a subtract, we would change it to add. So that is our conjugate. Let's go through just a few quick ones. Okay, a few quick examples. What will be the conjugate for these three expressions? Negative 5 plus 4 radical 3. I'm not changing that negative 5. The only thing I change is that sign in the middle. So the conjugate of negative 5 plus 4 radical 3 is going to be negative 5 minus 4 radical 3. So the only thing I want to change is the sign in the middle. So you're starting to see it. That's going to be a 2. Change that minus to a plus. 17 radical 2. Another example to illustrate. We don't care about changing that sign in front. We really don't want to. It's going to lead us down the wrong path. The only thing we change is the sign in the middle. So negative 8 plus 6 radical 5. The conjugate would be negative 8 minus 6 radical 5. A little bit more idea about the conjugate. Why the conjugate? We've seen things before that are pretty similar to a conjugate. So we're way off on a tangent now, but let's talk about multiplying x plus 3 times x minus 3. If I, so it's two terms by two terms. I would need to do FOIL. And when I do FOIL with conjugates, what happens? So first times first, I'll put a little f to say that's our first move, x times x is x squared. Outer is x times negative 3, negative 3x. Inner, positive 3 times x. And last, positive 3 times negative 3, negative 9. And when we combine like terms, our outer and inner cancel. That is a property of doing FOIL with conjugates, that our outer and inner terms cancel each other. And it's that canceling that takes care of the radical when we try to rationalize the denominator. It, any radical that we would have left over, they cancel each other, and our first and our last terms won't have radicals. So that's, that's why this multiplying with a, a conjugate will work. It, it cancels the radicals by outer and inner. When we have conjugates, they will always cancel each other. So let's go back to this problem. Let's just get a new page.